The way we do that is to establish a very high bar for the quality of evidence that we're going to accept. If we present bad evidence, it weakens our case. So we will only accept good evidence. You might think this video looks like excellent quality evidence, but it's not. It's terrible. I know that because I made it myself using an app on my phone to add a flying saucer to my video. But you should have known it was terrible evidence too, because all videos or pictures are what we call anecdotal evidence. That refers to anything that can't be directly studied or tested. I can directly study and test this rock because I'm holding it, but you can't because you're just watching it on a video. As far as you're able to prove, it might be nothing more than a special effect. Pictures or videos will never meet that high bar of evidence that we need. Millions of people are better than me at faking videos. And more than half a century ago, hoaxers were throwing hubcaps in the air and absolutely persuading many that they took authentic photos of a flying saucer. People accepted bad evidence, and the result was that they were wrong. Verbal stories, or stories presented on UFO TV programs, are also completely anecdotal and very untrustworthy. They get more and more exaggerated every time they're retold. Even though the people on these shows often seem trustworthy, we have to force ourselves to not simply believe everything on television. We have to force ourselves to be open to information that's not what we want to hear. This is how we improve our knowledge. Another way we scrutinize evidence to make sure it meets our high bar is to try to falsify our theories. What does the cancer researcher want most of all? She wants to find a cure for the particular cancer she's working on. So she gets the slightest positive result. The cancer responded slightly better to this one candidate drug than to the others. She knows the most premature and foolhardy thing she can do is to immediately declare, yay, I've found it, this cancer has been cured. Instead, she has to search for any possible alternate explanation for that positive result so she can eliminate it. Maybe it was caused by residue from cleaning her test equipment. The most important step she takes is to find ways to falsify any positive result. That's how she makes sure she's left with only the best evidence that passes all scrutiny. So, if the UFO researcher wants to convincingly show that aliens are visiting us, he has to apply that same extreme scrutiny to his theory to find every possible way that something else might account for his evidence. The video that looks like a craft making movements that airplanes can't might just be an optical illusion from the way the camera's moving. He has to absolutely eliminate that possibility, and then he has to work just as hard to find the next thing that might explain the video. So, falsify. Eliminate every other possibility if we want to make a strong case. We have to make sure it stands up to the scrutiny of falsification.